Hello and welcome to the webinar for Data Center in a Box, Making Networking Cloud Relevant. I am Milind Kulkarni. I am Product Manager for Array's Network Functions Platform, and I'm joined here uh, with my colleague, Victor Martin. He is a Senior Sales Engineering Manager based out of East Coast. Before we start and go into the actual webinar, few logistical things. This is a WebEx event. Please use the chat window for uh, webinar logistics and technical support in case you can't hear a question or can't hear or can't see the slides and so on. In case if you have a question uh, and feedback regarding the content of the webinar, please use the Q&A window inside the WebEx uh, portal. When we are done with this webinar, we will send out the PDF presentation as well as the recording uh, to all of you who is on the call. So without further ado, I'll get started. The software-centric revolution of the network is the next step in the revolution of the entire data center. First, applications and operating systems and compute, they started becoming, uh, becoming more software-centric. And today, they're highly software-centric and form the foundation for both public cloud as well as private cloud. Right on the heels, storage virtualization and software-defined storage followed suit, building on the vision of software-defined data center. And now, it's the time for networking infrastructure and network operations team to become more software-centric and more cloud-relevant. When we talk to our customers, they tell us a few things. And since on this webinar we have attendees from cloud and managed service providers, we will talk about that. We also have attendees from enterprise uh, organizations, so we will talk about those separately. So when we talk to our cloud and managed service provider uh, organizations, they tell us their business drivers. And they are, since they are providing services to their end customers, business agility is most critical to them. They want to scale up and scale out their infrastructure as based on their customers' needs. They also want to swap sometimes or repurpose their existing infrastructure to address customers' churn. Sometimes they, they get new customers, sometimes the customers go on um, for different business. The second business driver they are looking for is on-demand provisioning. They want to deploy services faster than the competition. Uh, they want to deploy within minutes and not few weeks or a long time. They definitely want to eliminate uh, forklift upgrades and truck rolls. Their business is, is pretty capital intensive. So they want to align their spend with customer demand. They want to buy networking, security, any of their infrastructure uh, devices only when the customers buy. And they want to put emphasis on subscription basis. The fourth thing they tell us is they want to consolidate racks and racks full of multi-vendor equipment and thereby saving cost in space, power, and cooling. And number five thing that they care about is essentially using orchestration or some sort of automation to simplify the process of creating services as well as creating more profitability. Now, our enterprise and public sector organization customers, they tell us their business drivers, although there's an overlap with cloud service providers, the fundamental view is different. The IT organizations of enterprise or public sector, they see their infrastructure as their competitive advantage. So they want to align their network with the DevOps culture because they want to evolve their networking quickly to help their businesses grow at the speed of, of the evolution. 
They also want to adopt, they are responsible for security of their infrastructure. So they want to adopt to new changing threats and they want to deploy those security services as quickly as possible. The third business driver for them is to minimize the use of shadow IT. As their business unit customers try to embrace public cloud services, they want to maintain visibility and control, at the same time deliver services. While doing that, they also want to adopt a hybrid cloud strategy. Almost every enterprise or public sector organization, they have an on-prem infrastructure as well as they are trying to leverage something that's in public cloud. They want to have that seamless integration. They want to make sure they are able to offer both to their internal customers. And last but not the least, while they are doing this, their budget continues to go down. So they are really focused on reducing capital expenditure as well as operational expenses by consolidating, consolidating infrastructure, standardizing hardware, decoupling software, and, uh, and using automation as much as possible. So if you look at a little bit of history here, Think of late 1980s and 1990s. During that time, disaggregation of compute took place. The entire industry went from a monolithic IBM mainframe computer to PCs made by different manufacturers. The exact same thing is happening now in networking. On the left-hand side of this picture, what you see here is for the last two decades or so, we have been using a very monolithic custom-built network appliance that has custom hardware, that has custom operating system, and that has a networking stack or some sort of network functionality, all made by one single manufacturer and all shipped as a package. The world now where it is is on the right side of this picture where all of that single monolithic network function is getting disaggregated. On the right side, what you will see is the underlying hardware is more and more based on x86 Intel architecture. That runs a hypervisor that creates an abstraction of an operating system. And on top of that hypervisor, you have multiple VAs or virtual appliances running on it. So that suddenly creates three layers of disaggregation from a single networking device. This is called as network functions virtualization and the fundamental value proposition of this disaggregation is to increase agility at the same time reducing the cost. So this provides more of a softer centricity. So has the adoption of the network disaggregation been really easy? The answer is yes and no. On the left side, while the increased agility and cost savings are highly desirable, implementing this kind of architecture is not without its own challenges. Because the complexity and the performance penalty that comes with it is really the challenge. And I'll go into the specifics of challenge of this type of architecture. So let's look at three distinct challenges that arise as a result of using the off-the-shelf compute for any networking workloads. If you're trying to run networking functions on a standard commercial off-the-shelf server or a, a something similar, the number one thing that you will notice is the performance SLAs are not guaranteed. And why is that? But before I talk about why, let me explain a little bit about this picture. Going from bottom up in this picture, on the bottom you see the NIC in blue color. These are the network interface cards. These have the 
interfaces for external world. So that's where your external ports connect to other infrastructure devices. Above the NIC, you have hypervisor, which essentially forms an abstraction layer for an operating system. That hypervisor has a vSwitch or a virtual switch that does switching in software. And on top of the vSwitch, you have three VMs or three virtual machines. These could be your three distinct network functions. This is a standard architecture that you would use on a commercial off-the-shelf server. So the challenge number one in this architecture, as I mentioned earlier, is it's very difficult to guarantee performance SLAs in this picture because there is a difference between peak performance versus sustained performance. In a traditional network box, an ASIC does all the heavy lifting and is designed specifically for raw packet processing. But the architecture based on x86 uh, CPU is designed for general purpose application workload. The vSwitch here in this case is a software switching. So how can you essentially guarantee performance in a software switching? So there are performance limitations there. And second thing is a chatty neighbor, a chatty virtual machine can take more resources than it should and thereby negatively affecting other virtual machines or other workloads. So in this architecture, you cannot really provide a guaranteed performance. Number two challenge, it's very, very difficult to deploy. Why? Because V switches or the virtual switches were built for typical virtual machine uh, applications like web hosting, uh, databases, data processing, etc. These Those applications tend to be not as chatty and they use large packets. Whereas if you talk about network functions, also known as VNFs or virtual network functions, are very, very different than a traditional server app. The networking functions are extremely chatty and use lots of small packets at a very high frequency. And as a result, the virtual networking functions need far more resources than a server virtual machine. So in this architecture, who knows how to configure the exact virtualization? Who is responsible for either going through vSwitch or bypassing the vSwitch? Who is responsible for uh, things like SRIOV or CPU, pinning a CPU for specific cores or NUMA boundaries, also known as non-uniform memory access boundaries around certain workloads? Who is responsible for creating physical to virtual port mapping? Do we have the skill set in the organization? And the third problem is as we move the workload into on a general purpose server, it creates extreme amount of system complexity. With network functions mixed along the application workloads, it's extremely difficult to locate faults isolate faults and then troubleshoot them. So to debug or to troubleshoot in this kind of environment, a networking team or a networking operations person need to be expert not only in networking, but also in server architectures, NICs, uh, drivers for the NICs, operating system version, etc. So it's a very, very complex task. So as a result, Array decided to solve the problem because we essentially have the benefit of being in the networking space for a long time as well as understanding the server architecture very well. So Array's mission is to solve the performance challenges and the complexity challenges that I just mentioned that stand in the way of broader adoption of a software-centric network. So to put it simply, Array makes virtual platforms or virtualization platform that are purpose built for network functions and it's made for network operations team. So our solutions essentially provide a fast path for you to get to the agility and cost efficiency that 
the leading cloud providers like Amazon, Google, and Facebook use. So it's essentially the exact same type of platform. So what is a network functions platform? So think of Array's network functions platform product line as providing your business with a data center in a box. And that's why the name of the webinar is Data Center in a Box. On the left-hand side of this picture, you will see the benefits of software centricity. The platform is like a virtualized server, and it enables networking that is far more agile and very, very cost effective. At the same time, on the right side, the platform supports hardware like performance SLAs, and that is far simpler to deploy and manage. So essentially, it combines the best of both worlds. It combines the software centricity as well as a networking device. So it's a networking device for a networking team that allows you to do uh, network virtualization at a really quick rate. And that's why it is at the intersection of those two, and hence the Venn diagram that you see here. Uh, notice that this platform is running multiple virtual network functions. It can run not only array virtual network function as shown there with an array logo, but it can also run third-party virtual network functions like Cisco, F5, or Juniper, as we are showing in this picture. So what does this platform really mean? But before I do that, let me tell you a story. Go back in time a little bit and, and think how we did things. And I wish I could do a quick poll here and see who had been to uh, Disneyland on a road trip or a similar road trip with their family. But try to recall uh, a trip that you took, a road trip that you took to Disneyland or a similar, similar place 10 years ago. How did we plan that trip? How did we do it? Well, um, in even today, you can just get a packaging list. Disney produces a packaging list. So we started with a packaging list. Then we went to AAA office, got the maps, um, and essentially familiarized the maps a little bit. Then we watched TV or local newspaper to get the weather report at Disneyland. Remember, we also took camera with us at that time. It's important to have camera. Then if we had kids, if kids were traveling with us, it's a long road trip, so we definitely wanted to take some games, music, movies, etc. Well, of course, we wouldn't forget flashlight in case of emergencies. Um, we also carried phone diary that is made of paper variety, and that fit in a wallet or a purse. And of course, while we're on a road trip, we need credit cards and watch and all of that. So that's how we planned a road trip. Now, what do we do today? We just carry a smartphone. The smartphone not only has maps, but the map shows current traffic conditions. Not only we have the current weather forecast, it also provides a microclimate prediction of the specific place where we are in at that time. It not only has a camera, but that camera is also connected on internet so we can instantly share the pictures. We now have infinite variety of games. Where you get the idea? The new platform, as a smartphone or the new platform, significantly enhances the old functions that we have been using. The new platform is agile, simple, compact, future-proof, and consolidates many functions. Now, these days, we can absolutely not live without our smartphone. We have made that switch in our personal life, and we are making the exact same switch in our, personal, uh, in our professional life. The exact same thing is happening in networking. The old days of individual networking box that does one thing or one function are gone. The network functions platform consolidates multiple network functions just like a smartphone does. Let me show you.
today we have racks, rack full of equipment, load balancers, firewalls, web application firewalls, and whatnot. Those can be taken and converted into virtual appliances running on essentially fewer and fewer network functions platform. This significantly consolidates the infrastructure and it increases the efficiency and return on investment. So this multi-tenancy allows IT teams to support the diverse yet very different needs from multiple departments, multiple partners, customer, and other, other interests. So consolidation replaces the large footprint of a traditional networking appliance with smaller number of platforms that consume far less space and power. Let's take a little bit deeper look. Just like a smartphone, the Array's network functions platform supports network functions from Array as they are shown here in orange color. Just like you would get uh, basic functions on your smartphone. But if you want to augment them with third party functions you can you can have uh, you can host them on top of this function for example you can deploy virtual adcs or ssl vpn or van optimization from array you can also deploy third party software from other vendors like silver peak fortinet or any other uh, an organization that wants to try some open source software absolutely that can be run on this platform so any best-of-breed software or any software that supports KVM can be concentrated on this platform. How does it work? So how does the guaranteed performance in a shared environment work? So the way the platform is architected is the array's virtualization technology extends all the way down to its hardware level. It reserves dedicated resources for each virtual network function. There is ability to partition uniquely the CPU resources, hardware SSL resources, interfaces, memory, and ports. The performance with this kind of resource allocation and reservation you can achieve performance that's equal or sometimes even greater than a standalone dedicated hardware appliance within a shared environment. So let me give an example. If I want to run a, a virtual ADC instance, we specify that I want, to inst I want to run a large ADC instance, automatically the CPU resource number of cores will be allocated, the hardware SSL resources will be allocated, the number of interfaces will be allocated, and the amount of memory will be allocated. If I want to run a medium instance of a VPN, correspondingly, the platform will automatically allocate and make the connections in the back. Similarly, if I want to run a medium instance of a web application firewall or a large instance of next gen firewall, the resources will be automatically allocated. Let's go even a, a little bit deeper and, and really understand what is happening under the hood. So in a nutshell, for a benefit, it's really the ability to deploy in minutes, not weeks or months, is what's happening. But the way it works is there are three layers that are shown in this picture. The number one layer at the bottom is the NIC and SSL. So that's the hardware resource of, for interfaces and the I.O. that's connecting inside the platform. In the middle is the array operating system that's doing all the magic and that's where the magic source is. And on top, there is a virtualization layer for KVM. On the right side, there are CPU resources by, as shown in four cores and then there are uh, memory that's there. So if we were to select a specific virtual network function, in this case, a medium SSL VPN. 
we simply select a virtual network function image and then select either a small or an entry or a medium or a large instance. So we just tell the platform what kind of instance do you want. Then if we, in this case I'm telling that I want a medium instance of SSL VPN. The IRA operating system will automatically assign CPU, it will automatically assign memory, SSL and interface. It automates the SRIOV uh, provisioning, it automates the CPU pinning, it has already set the NUMA boundary settings, and it also set the physical to virtual port mapping. Similarly, I could select two small instances one for ADC and one for web application firewall. Similarly, the array operating system will automatically do the assignment of CPU resources, SSL and interface resources. It will also behind the scene will automate SRIOV, CPU pinning, NUMA boundaries, virtual to physical port mapping and allocate those resources. So now with this automated function happening under the hood, deploying any networking function or security or application delivery function or any other network function takes minutes, not weeks or months. So once this is up and running, these virtual networks can be easily interconnected to create a service chain or a custom workflow. So let me explain this a little bit. On the screen here, on the web user interface, you will see the network functions that are automatically shown. If you have installed the network functions, they'll automatically show up here. So on this virtualized instance, I see that there are five different types of virtual network functions that have been installed. There is a virtual application delivery controller, that's the first one. The second one is an array SSL VPN. The third one is an Imperva firewall. The number four is Arbor's DDoS uh, functionality. And number five is the Palo Alto Nation firewall. So all these five things are automatically visible here as soon as I provision them earlier. Just like you would draw using a Visio diagram, you can drag and drop them here and create your custom service chain workflow. You can test it and verify it if it's working or not. If you need changes, you can quickly create a second one. So essentially you're creating a software chain of your network functions right there. So it, it becomes a very, very simple task. You can again change based on the third picture here at the bottom is a third chain that we're able to create using the network function. If you don't want to use the graphical user interface, there is a RESTful API and integration with OpenStack as a compute node so that you can integrate this whole platform as part of your larger management and orchestration uh, system that you already have in-house. So I want to show the example use cases what use cases uh, we have seen and deployed in some of the customers. So we are going to take two use cases. Use case number one is for cloud service provider, managed service provider. In this example of multi-tenancy, a cloud service provider has deployed different size of virtual ADCs for customer one that needs to support a large number of customers. So that's why there are two large instances of APV. For second customer, it, has, it needs a medium size of load balancer. For customer three, there is a load balancing instance for a homegrown application. It does not necessarily probably get a lot of traffic. That's why they provision a medium instance. For customers four, five, and six, they have deployed uh, small instances of load balancer, uh, SSL VPN, and a van, providing high availability, secure remote access, as well as van optimization. So from a single platform, they're able to provide high availability for e-commerce, software as service, and home-grown applications. Each customer is, uh, 
is guaranteed SLA as well as their own management. In addition, the CSP or cloud service provider or managed service provider can use remaining capacity to offer other services to other customers as well. So that's use case number one. So even that's hosting multiple customers in a shared environment, yet guaranteeing them the performance, the scalability, and the resources. Example number two is hosting third-party virtual appliances, and this we sometimes see in enterprise use case environment. In this example of consolidation, the IT team has swapped out six different physical firewall appliances and for one network function, essentially, running six different firewalls. In this example, then they have reduced significant uh, space consumption, power consumption, without sacrificing on the performance and and the agility. With software centricity, now they're able to quickly react to their business needs. In addition to these virtual ADCs, not only they provide availability and performance, they also provide firewall and visibility into SSL encrypted traffic. Remember, this platform has hardware SSL resources. So any, any function, network function that requires uh, SSL or crypto processing it is accelerated on this platform. So again, as mentioned earlier, this platform provides two advantages. One is the software centricity that provides you with the flexibility and provisioning using a software-like environment. At the same time, guarantee resources um, and performance like a physical hardware network device. So why do customers choose that? Uh, these are the reasons that customers tell us all the time is because the network functions platform enables networking security and application delivery functions with software-centric agility. It supports virtual network functions while retaining guaranteed hardware-like performance. It, the platform simplifies virtualized network deployment in a manner that's far more widespread, that, that allows far more quicker and widespread adoption. At the same time, you can control your evolution of your network. The network function platform also provides a vendor neutral platform uh, that makes the availability of not only array functions, but any third party function. So you can build best of breed solutions on this platform. And this platform drives down the cost for hardware, software, as well as it saves on space, power, cooling, and provisioning. So in summary, as the networks continue to evolve, the networking teams retain the control of the network infrastructure and they can pace their evolution, how they want to evolve their network. So Array has a broad set of customers from healthcare, to financial services, to education, to government, to cloud service providers, and everything in between. Arrays network functions, virtualized network functions, and application delivery functions, and uh, other products that Array makes are trusted by many of the world's largest organizations. The case studies of all these logos that you're seeing are available and posted on Array website. So please take a look at ArrayNetworks.com. We are headquartered in Silicon Valley in Milpitas, California. We have a large patent portfolio. Um, Array makes three distinct type of products. There is network functions platform, application delivery controllers, secure access gateways, um, and we have 5,000 plus customers worldwide. So with that, we come to the end of the webinar. I would like to open it for questions that I can answer.
Okay, so we have a question here. Can you uh, provide a little bit more detail on uh, how you ensure guaranteed performance for the virtual appliances that you would run on the platform? Sure, I can. Uh, thanks for the question. Um, I show on one of the slides is the RA Network Functions platform has ability to guarantee hardware resources. And let me use an analogy, uh, and then we can talk about the specifics. Imagine there is a traffic jam uh, where lots of cars, especially in, in not necessarily the U.S., but other parts of the world where many vehicles are essentially on the road, a small, starting from a big bus to a car to uh, um, a bicycle and, and pedestrian and everything in between. That creates congestion. But here, once we guarantee lanes, or once we provide lanes, could be like carpool lanes, could be like uh, dedicated lanes for specific type of traffic, you have a lot better traffic flow. Uh, this is similar to uh, drag racing, where there are lanes for each car and the cars can really go fast because as a result of that. It's a very high level uh, analogy, but exact same thing or similar thing is happening underneath the hood in area architecture where the resources such as CPU, the number of CPU cores are allocated, the IO, the input output capability is allocated specifically for some PCI lanes, amount of RAM is allocated specifically, the SSL resources allocated specifically per partition, and that guarantees essentially uh, guaranteed performance per virtual application. And that's the architecture and the, the software that does it behind the scene is the area operating system, and that's how we guarantee the performance. There's some uh, questions around pricing here. Uh, do, do I need to pay for both, both the hardware and software independently? And the other one is um, whether or not the array ADC, SSL VPN uh, software modules are included with the platform. Okay. Um, so imagine the, the example I gave you, like a smartphone, um, where you purchase a smartphone and then you either buy or, or download app. Very similar concept here. So the Array Network Functions platform, you purchase that separately, and the applications or the virtual network functions running on top are, are available at a different, uh, different price point. So you have the ability as a networking team to pick and choose what you want and build the solution that suits your need versus we giving you everything and, and dictating um, what you have to use. Can you talk a little bit more about the differences from a configuration standpoint on what makes Array's approach simpler than using regular servers? Sure. So there was one slide uh, that I talked about that showed what is happening underneath uh, the hood. Uh, and this goes back to the fact that in today's world, if you're trying to virtualize your network, networking functions, you as a networking team, you have to have uh, expertise in server architectures, in, uh, network interface cards, device drivers, SRIOE, DPDK. You have to have a knowledge of that plus the networking functions that you're trying to do. So theoretically, a person who wants to, who can spend lots of time looking through manuals and fine tuning and, and trying the, the details can do it. It might take a few weeks or a few months based on how uh, your current skill set. We'll automate that exactly in the background. So as soon as you declare that I want a type of instance that could be an entry-level instance, entry in our, in our parlance means a micro instance. So you can, you can say that I want a micro instance or, an, or, a, or a small instance or a medium instance or a large, large instance. As soon as you declare that, the software in the background is doing all the dirty work for you. It's allocating the hardware resources, as I mentioned in my previous first question, is assigning uh, the SRIOE PCI lanes. It's allocating 
memory it's allocating ssl resources it's allocating compute resources um, and it's also setting up numa boundary and essentially all of that configuration that you would have to slog through uh, for for days or weeks it's automatically done and remember it was only for one virtual instance this platform can take up to 32 instances so imagine trying to do that manually for 32 instances you're going to take a long time so that's all been automated and that's how we do it under the hood behind the scenes but and it happens in less than a minute okay next question here Is there a way to determine how many of my existing load balancers or other networking security appliances can be consolidated onto the array platform? Um, sure, I can talk about that. So this network functions platform comes in three flavors. Um, I won't use specific numbers. Our sales teams will, will be happy to come and talk to you, but think of this as a platform comes in three flavors, a small platform, a medium platform, and a large platform. Uh, the small platform is one rack unit. The medium and, and large platforms come in two rack unit uh, sizes. Um, the small platform can take up to eight instances. The medium platform can take up to 16 instances. And the large platform can host up to 32 instances. Um, and we have a pretty elaborate table of how do we map uh, of hardware performance versus uh, virtual performance. Uh, in general, uh, you typically look and size the platform deployment based on either on a throughput or a connections per second or SSL uh, transactions per second, etc. And we provide those, that guidance. Some of that guidance is already available on our data sheet. Feel free to take a look on Network Functions Platform data sheet on Array website. Uh, and if you want to look at specifically for your instance, let us know. We'll be happy to talk to you um, and explain exactly uh, what's the right fit for you. Let's see here. Um, in one of the slides, you mentioned third-party networking and security functions. Can you elaborate on this anymore? And uh, can I actually can I literally run any KVM-based VA on the array platform? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, absolutely. So one of the reasons why customers like this platform is because it allows hosting not only array virtual appliances, sometimes we call them as VAs or virtual network functions, uh, but it also runs third party or open source network functions on it. Um, so that will allow you to build a best of breed network. Um, you can run any network function that is capable of running on KVM on this platform. And I'll give you an example. Uh, there is a customer of ours. They had a hardware, load, uh, hardware firewall from one of the prominent vendors, uh, and they have been running that in their data center. They took the virtual version of the same product and ran as a virtual instance on our platform, and they got more performance. So we have interesting data um, like that, and, and we'll be happy to share that. Let's see, just looking through here. Um, where is the technical support located? Um, ERA is a global company. Um, so our technical support is primarily, primarily located here in the United States. We also have uh, geographical locations and support locations in China as well as India. So we are able to support uh, customers worldwide 24-7. Is there any other question? Uh, I think that's it. Okay. So again, thank you very much. On behalf of uh, this is Milan Kulkarni and Victor and Array Networks, we thank you for your time. Bye.